Hi, my name is Jen McCullough and I'm from St. Mark Presbyterian Church. I'm making this video to bring our two readings this week together. Our reading, one of them is chapter four from Jesus and the Disinherited, uh, where Howard Thurman's theme for the chapter is hate. And our scripture passage is from the Gospel of Luke, chapter four, sorry, setting my timer so I don't talk too long. Here we go. Uh, chapter four, verses 31 through 37. And that's the story of Jesus casting out an unclean spirit from a man. So how do we hold these two texts together? Um, I would love to hold them together in a very long conversation. So if anyone wants to uh, call me up, send me an email, uh, find me on the patio at St. Mark on Sunday, I've got a lot of thoughts. But for the sake of this five minute-ish video, I wanna do one specific thing. And that's to address um, an assertion that Thurman makes that I agree with, but I wanna play with it a little bit. Thurman argues that hatred can be described, but not defined. So described like the feeling of hatred directed at oneself or the feeling of hatred directed from oneself to others. Um, the language to describe that is hard, but we can, or the language to define that is difficult, but we can describe what it feels like. And so I want to use our Luke passage today to see if we can define hatred just a little bit. That I'm finding myself this week considering how taboo conversations about hate have been throughout my life, where as a child I was told hate was a bad word. And then as a Christian, there is pressure not to hate because we are meant to be people who love but not hate. And yet, hate is a reality and it's something that it's okay to feel hate. It's a human emotion. And I really want to think about what it means, what it is. So Thurman gives me a really helpful metaphor that my thinking today is going to turn on. So if you'll come with me on my thought experiment, Thurman talks about people being possessed by hatred. And that's a great parallel, the way that hatred can take us over, the way that hatred can change who we are, can make us say things that we otherwise would not say, is similar to, I think, this man being possessed by a spirit. So coming along with that, let's look at the man's words that he says to Jesus. So rewinding a second, this story, if you want to pause and read it, Luke 4, 31 through 37, you're welcome to. Otherwise, you can believe me. Um, but so Jesus is teaching in the, in the synagogue with authority, and he's confronted by a man who has, as Luke says, the spirit of an unclean demon. Now, side note, this man is a beloved child of God. This man is not a demon. No human being is a demon. It's important to make that linguistic difference. Um, the language of demon is powerful and violent. And so I just need to make sure that you know, the man is never a demon. The demon is with the man in some way. But so these man, this man's words, I think, are what give me a little bit of an idea how to define hatred. The man says first to Jesus, let us alone. What have you to do with us, Jesus of Nazareth? And that statement, that is a statement that lacks connection. It says, you're not connected to me, Jesus. We have nothing in common, Jesus. There is no empathy between us, you and me, Jesus. And I think that's important to differentiate anger from hate. They're similar, at least in how I experience those two emotions. But hate lacks empathy. Hate denies connection. After that, the demon says, because the demon is speaking through the man, to Jesus, have you come to destroy us? And I think that's really important when we consider how hatred leads to violence, or how hatred itself is violence. That destruction sits the threat of being destroyed is part of this man's feeling of hatred he's afraid jesus will destroy him and we get violence when someone does violence in return if i harm him he won't harm me and so i think another thing about hatred is it sits close to violence at all times because of fear of destruction or fear of harm so it's not a full definition of hatred but i think hatred lacks connection and empathy and is very close to violence or fear of violence. And so what does Jesus do in this confrontation? Well, Jesus rebukes him and casts the spirit out. But before those words, I think it's important to notice Jesus connects to the man. He could walk away from someone yelling at him. He could leave. 
He could ignore him. But instead, Jesus turns to him and connects with him. And that hatred there is gone from that scenario. The demon is cast out and the connection is made between Jesus and the man. And so that's my brief thoughts and where I'm landing on this today. There is so much more to talk about from Thurman's chapter and from this strange scripture passage that I love so much. Uh, But I wanna leave with you that idea that as people who follow Jesus, our job is to connect, to find ways to connect and to have empathy for one another. Thank you for listening. Feel free to reach out if you'd like to talk about this anymore. And I hope to see you soon.